Hey, Abbott, what time is it? It's time for the Abbott and Costello Show. We're on the air for ABC here in Hollywood. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go with the Abbott and Costello Show. Yes, it's the Abbott and Costello Show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood for your listening and laughing pleasure, with chuckles with a carload and music by Matty Maldek. So hold on to your chairs, folks, for here they are, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Hey, Abbott! Hey, Abbott! All right, all right, all right, stop that yelling. Where have you been since early this morning? Well, I'll tell you, I've been working for the Red Cross collecting money. Oh, that's very commendable, Costello. Yes, I get 10% of what I collect. Today I got $150 and they got 30. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. If you get 10%, how come the Red Cross only got $30? And you got 150 I don't know, just lucky, I guess. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad you're spending your time at something useful. Well, I didn't work all day. I sneaked into a movie theater and saw a French movie. Ah, but I wish I could get into the movies. I tried like Lana Turner. I really did. I sat on a drugstore stool all day sipping sodas and wearing sweaters and nothing happened. <laughs> it didn't. Yeah. I guess I shouldn't have worn those short sleeves. <laughs> Gee, I wish I had a girl like Lana Turner. Oh, because all girls are alike. Take my wife. She's just a rag, a bone, a hank of hair. Boy, you really went in the junk business, didn't you? <laughs> I don't know why I even talk about girls with you. You'll, you'll never have a girl. Oh, yeah? Well, I got me a new girl right now, and tomorrow morning I'm going to take her boating. Boating? <laughs> Duke and I. Duke and I are going to take her over to the What do you know about boating. sailing boats? What do I know about yeah, sailing boats? Yeah, what do you know about sailing boats? I know boats? a lot, Abbott. Get a load of this. Batten down the topsail, lower the mizzen mast, heave the anchor, heave the anchor, and scrub my back. <laughs> Scrub your back. Yeah, I learned to sail boats in the bathtub. Oh, get them out. Before the boys get any further involved in nonsense, here's a thought that makes good sense. that noise? Where have you been all week? I've been looking for you. Well, I was home, Abbott, and you won't believe this, but I built a television set. What'd you build it out of? I took some bed springs from my mother's bed and made some coils. Then I took a whole lot more wire from my mother's bed springs and wound it around the coils. Then I got a piece of glass for a screen and I looked through it. What'd you see? My mother falling through the bed springs. You know nothing about television. Maybe not, but my brother Pat invented a television set for automobiles. They're going to put them on the dashboards of every car in Hollywood. How can a man drive a car, look at a television set, and watch the road? In California, who watches the road? No. <laughs> There's no sense talking to you, Costello. You and your brother Pat and all the kids in your family are a bunch of morons. Now, just a minute, Abbott. Morons. Hmm? Just take a look at this picture. There's me and all my brothers and sisters. And you can tell by that picture that my mother didn't raise any morons. Maybe not. But your mm. father must have been pretty busy. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and laugh, Abbott. You might as well. The audience ain't laughing. Yes, it did. I ne <laughs> Never mind that. I still say you're a moron. I can prove it. I am not. All right, then. 
Why do you go to bed every night in a swimming suit? I have to. My hot water bottle leaks. I... <laughs> It's a shame. A boy that comes from a nice, as nice a family as you do, a lovely mother, and yeah. out, of, out of seven children, you are the only nitkin poop. How, how did that happen? I don't know. I'm just lucky, I guess. <laughs> I think you take after your Uncle Mike. Poor Uncle Mike. Ah. He's in bad shape, Abbott. He is? Yes, he is. I didn't know that. He lost his job, spent all his money, and then started hocking things. Oh, that's too bad. He hocked his gold teeth, then he hocked his toupee, his glass eye, and... Now Aunt May is suing him. What for? Desertion. <laughs> she says there's more of him hanging in a pawn shop window than there is at home. <laughs> Costello, you'll never amount to anything. Is that so? Why, only last night I heard that I was one of the most handsome comedians on the radio. One of the finest actors on the screen. And the answer to every woman's prayer. Who, uh, who told you all this? Where, where did you hear it? I talk in my sleep. <laughs> that was a wonderful dream, though. Last night I dreamed I was one of the three musketeers. There they were on a desert island. Me, Rita Hayworth, and Hedy Lamar. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. The cast of the three musketeers are all men. Abbott, when I dream, I do my own casting. <laughs> You ought to be ashamed of yourself All day long you chase girls And at night you dream about girls Yes, and now I'm writing songs about girls I wrote a song about a girl today no, What's the name of it? It's entitled If you were the only girl in the world And I was the only boy Who would I play handball with at the Y? <laughs> you, you a songwriter You don't know the first thing about writing songs Songs should be uh, sentimental uh, the kind of songs that make money are, are mother songs Oh, I wrote a mother song What's the name of it? I call it Mother Mother, don't fall for that chiropractor He's only pulling your leg <laughs> Would you like to have me sing it for you? Abby? Sing it? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no Don't tell me you, Mother, you're, wait a minute, he's don't. only pulling your leg Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, no, please. None of that Don't tell me you're a singer, too Oh, sure I used to be a member of that great singing group the sons of the pioneers. Why did you leave them? I ran out of saddle soap. <laughs> I thought so. You can't sing a note. Yeah, but I'll have you know right now that I'm attending singing school. Which one? It's called the Hollywood Conservatory of Voice Training and Plumbing. <laughs> plumbing? Why does a singing school teach plumbing? Well, if your pipes get stopped up, you can fix them yourself. <laughs> hey, Uncle Bud. Hey, Uncle Bud. It's Abbott's nephew, folks. The Gregory Peck of the Sunset Bowling Alleys. What's on your mind, nephew Norman? Well, Uncle Bud, they just got a new girl to play the part of Portia on Portia Faces Life. And the director of the show sent me over to get Costello to come over to the studio right away. Do they want me to play opposite this girl that's going to play Portia? No, they just want to test her out. And they want her to get a good look at you, Uncle what, Lou. What, 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 what for? Well, they figure if she can face you, she can face life. <laughs> You know, that F-nephew of yours is a lovely boy, Abbott. And folks, the day he was born, his mother took one look at him, went out and put a porcupine in the stork's nest and said to the stork, Now we're even. <laughs> why are you always mean to Norman? Why, why don't you get friendly with him and invite him over to your house, Lou? Well, maybe I will. Send him over to my house Saturday. Him and me will play jacks. That's fine. Yep. Then I can let the car down on his head. <laughs> Ah, you're just jealous of Norman because he has such a fine reputation. He's not like you. He, he wants to make something of himself. All you do is stand around all day and make goo-goo eyes at the girl. Why do you make those goo-goo eyes? You know me, Abbott. When I got a goo, I got a goo. <laughs> well, you'd be better off if you found some nice girl and got married. Well, I thought I'd found one, Abbott. But thank goodness I found her out in time. What do you mean? I discovered that she was planning on having a home and children and domestic security. What's, what's wrong with that? Don't you get it? She's a gold digger. <laughs> and besides, I don't want to get married. Shame on you. Shame for that remark. Marriage is a wonderful thing. Marriage is an institution. What do you mean an institution? But who wants to live in an institution? Oh! <laughs> Marriage. 
Marriage, marriage is a three-ring circus. A three-ring... What do you mean a three-ring circus? First comes the engagement ring. Yes. Then the wedding ring, and then suffering. False. <laughs> You never make a good husband in the first place. You don't know what a husband is. Who wouldn't make a good husband? You don't know what a husband is. I don't know what a husband no. is. A husband is what's left of a sweetheart after the nerve has been killed. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> but marriage, no. Marriage is a marriage is a wonderful thing. Marriage is the union. If I can of find two... my place, I'll be with you, Sonny Boy. <laughs> you don't have to find it, Lou. I'll explain it to you. Marriage is the union of two hearts beating as one. Marriage is what brings complete happiness to men and women. Ask any married couple, and they'll tell you that marriage is the most wonderful, just wonderful... A, just, just a minute, Abbott. All the kids are asleep now, so you can tell the truth. <laughs> the trouble with you is that you've never met a girl that would have you. I did so. I went steady with a redhead for the past six months. Every night I used to meet her under a broken streetlight, and we'd hug and we'd kiss. Well, what happened to her? Somebody fixed that streetlight Saturday night, and I haven't seen her since. I thought so, I thought so. No, no girl would marry you. You have nothing to offer a girl. If Hildegard would marry me, I'd have something to offer her. Now, what could you give Hildegard? A last name. <laughs> Boys. Well, Hello, well, it's our charming secretary, Viola Vaughn. Viola, you look charming, uh, as usual tonight. Oh, uh, thank you. And I'm glad to see you both looking good. Well, Costello, you look exceptionally well. Thank you, Viola. I feel right in the pink. You are? Yep. My blue ones are in the laundry. <laughs> Viola, how about stepping out with me tonight? Viola, don't want any part of you, Costello. You go with too many girls. Yes, Abbott's right. right. If you want to go steady with me, there are two things you'll have to do. Okay, what are they? You'll have to stay away from all the fat girls. Okay. And you'll have to stay away from all the skinny Just girls. Just a minute, Viola. What about all the pretty girls in between? Don't worry, they'll stay away from you. <laughs> That's telling them, Viola, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shovel the almonds in the wagon, Abbott. I'm driving him nuts tonight. <laughs> Watch yourself, Viola. Gracie Allen would just love to have two shows. <laughs> Costello, you're just jealous because Viola is a great actress. Yes, he's right, Costello. I started off in vaudeville, then I went to musical comedy, then I got in pictures, and then I went into radio. Can't hold a job no place, can you? <laughs> Viola, I, I, I just can't seem to resist you. Yeah. Lou Costello! Yes. How dare you kiss me? I was just trying to steal a little fruit in the Garden of Love. You wouldn't know a tomato from a watermelon. How could I? I never kissed a watermelon. <laughs> Quite a kiss, Costello You know, you're not like other boys Viola, I've been told that before By whom? Other boys <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I've got to go now I'm, I, I'm taking rumba lessons Oh Viola, how do you rumba? Well, well, here, here, I'll show you Go ahead First, I put my arm around you mm -hmm. Then I throw my left shoulder out mm -hmm. Then we take a step And I throw my left hip out I got that. Now, what part do I throw out? <laughs> if I had your parts, Costello, I'd throw them all out. <laughs> That's only half the fun, folks. Just as many laughs yet to come. But first, listen to this.
now the spotlight turns to Howl Winters, our singing star. Here he is with Matty Malnick and his orchestra. <laughs> Look up, look up, when everything's looking down, whenever you're low, let everything go, come out of that gloomy frown. Look up, look up, whenever those clouds are gray, it's gonna be fun whenever that sun starts chasing those clouds away. There's no room for old man gloom, so shake him. You're bound to take him Just try a smile or two But whatever you do Look up, look up Don't ever give up the fight When everything's wrong It's never too long Till everything turns out right So whatever you do Look up Look up, look up when everything's looking down Whenever you're low Let everything go Come out of that gloomy frown Look up, look up Whenever those clouds are gray It's gonna be fun Whenever that sun starts chasing those clouds away There's no room for old man gloom So shake him you're bound to take him Just try a smile or two But whatever you do, look up, look up Don't ever give up the fight When everything's wrong, it's never too long Till everything turns out right So whatever you do, look up A lovely voice. Hey, Costello, Costello, come out here. Voice. What were you doing in the dressing room? <laughs> Packing, Abbott. I'm getting out of California. I'm disgusted. Every year, the same cold, rainy, lousy, unusual weather. <laughs> <laughs> well, Get so now you don't know what kind of clothes to hock anymore. <laughs> before you leave, you'd better pay your income tax. Oh, I just got my tax blank from Washington. Them 1949 income tax blanks are printed on paper with real sharp edges. Hey, I noticed the sharp edge, edge paper those income tax blanks have this year. I wonder what that's for. Well, they figured that after you fill it out and see how much money you got left, you can cut your throat with it. <laughs> Did your Uncle Mike make, make out his tax returns? <laughs> yes, he earned $30,000 last year, but he had a tax accountant figure his tax, and he only paid the government 75 cents. Say, I'd like to get that accountant to, to make out my tax Where can I get in touch with him? Just call San Quentin and ask for number 211869 <laughs> Well, Mike should have made out his own tax Do you know how to pay your tax, Costello? It's very simple You just get on the income tax bureau? Yes There's a guy sitting there with a big pad and pencil He's a tax collector Yes First he takes all the money he made last year Yes that's all. He just takes all the money you made last year. <laughs> Will you please talk sense? What's that you have in your hand? Is that a tax blank? Nope. It's a fan letter from one of my Sam Shovel fans. Uh, what is your Sam Shovel story about tonight, Lou? Well, in keeping with the income tax season, Abbott, I will do one of my famous income tax cases. I call it the case of the striptease dancer who was arrested for income tax fraud, or she took off too much for entertainment. <laughs> That sounds interesting. Let's do it. <laughs> and now, the Hooping Company, makers of the famous remedy for colds, Hooping Cough Drops, <laughs> present your favorite detective mystery, Sam Shovel, Private Detective. But first, a word about our product. Folks, get a box of Hooping Cough Drops today. It's the only cough drop that contains carbolic acid. Put one in your mouth and watch your cough disappear. Also, your tonsils, your tongue, and your teeth. <laughs> Friends, whooping cough drops have instant action. Listen to how they work. 
Here is a man suffering from a bad cold. I'll say I got a bad cold. <laughs> give me a whooping cough drop, please. I will now give this poor man a whooping cough drop. He swallowed it. And now, sir, tell us, how do you feel? Just wonderful. I feel great. <laughs> I got to speak to the factory They're making those too strong (laughs) And now Whooping Cough Drops Proudly presents That thriller of thrillers Sam Shovel Private Detective Yes I'm Sam Shovel Sam Shovel Private Detective Well I got to go to work now I got to knuckle down And write some letters I hate to knuckle down and write letters. It ain't easy writing letters with your knuckles. <laughs> I think I'll dictate to my secretary, Viola. Yes, Mr. Shovel? Take a letter. Uh, W. Wrong, I had G. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? I want to dictate a letter. Dear Mr. Harrington... I've been working on the Harrington case for five years, Mr. Harrington. I've enjoyed working on the Harrington case, Mr. Harrington. You are one of my best clients, and Mr. Harrington, you can count on me. My best to Mrs. Harrington, and to you too, Mr. Harrington. Who shall I send it to? Rudolph Schlumpheimer. (laughs) Rudolph Schlumpheimer? But, Mr. Shovel, you told me you were going to write to Mr. Pruneferter today. Okay, then send it to him. (laughs) Mr. Shovel... Are you sure you're feeling all right? (laughs) Sure I'm all right. Now you go and write. (laughs) You can go now. We'll be back to work. This detective business is very interesting. (laughs) Last week I solved the case of the missing coal miner. I hunted for him for three weeks and I found him. He was hiding one of John L. Lewis's eyebrows. I look on my calendar. I've got to go to court against my dentist today. Every six months, I bring my dentist to court. I believe in that old saying, sue your dentist twice a year. (laughs) My pal, Lieutenant Abbott of the Homicide Squad, is going to help me on a case. You've got to admire Lieutenant Abbott. He's worked hard for the police department for 20 years. He's managed to put aside a nice nest egg. He ain't got a dime, just a nest with egg in it. Hello, Sam Shovel. You're late. I couldn't help it, Sam. I just made an abortion arrest. Some tramps were cooking a pot of coffee next to a fire hydrant. And you arrested them for that? Certainly. He was in a no-perking zone. (laughs) Hey, Lieutenant Abbott! Lieutenant Abbott! I caught them thieves! Uh, Sam, this is one of the department's new traffic officers, Sergeant Murphy. Sergeant, how'd you catch those thieves? Well, sir, they were shooting up Sunset in a new Hudson going 90 miles an hour, and I forced them over to the curb. Oh, what a chase. Good work, good work. I hope you didn't damage your motorcycle. Oh, I'm supposed to have a motorcycle? <laughs> Never mind him, Sam. I need your help on an income tax case. It's Gertie, the queen of the gamblers. Uh, she listened to you. You know her. You were kids together. Yes, gambling Gertie. Even when she was a kid, she was a gambler. I remember how I used to help her carry her bookies home from school. <laughs> were you in love with her, Sam? Yes, but it was just puppy love, and she broke it off. When did she break it off? As soon as she found out I wasn't a puppy. <laughs> Sam, we're wasting time. Gambling Gertie has been defrauding the government on her income tax. And we've got to go to her place and arrest her. Come on. Lieutenant Abbott and I went down to Gambling Gertie's joint. As we walked in, there she stood. I spoke to her. Gertie, it's nice to see you. You look lovely with those long, tapering legs. And your sleek, well-rounded form. You look as smooth as glass. Sam, this is me over here. You're looking at the water cooler. Sam, lay up to her. Remember, we're after information. Go ahead, give her a kiss. Gertie, 
You're as sweet as ever. Oh, Sam, you haven't changed a bit. I can see the love light in your eyes. Come to my arms, Sam. Let me put my head on your shoulder. Ah, oh, that's it. Now put your arms around me. Oh, that's fine. Now, Sam, put your head close to mine. Ah. Oh. Ah, oh, Sam, you're so sweet. Sam, why don't you kiss her? How can I? She's fighting me. <laughs> oh, Sam, I want to kiss you in the worst way. Try it with a mouth full of bubble gum. That's the worst way. <laughs> Enough of this nonsense. Gertie, you're under arrest. We're taking you to jail. You made false statements on your income tax. What false, what false statements? Oh, that's your line. Excuse me. <laughs> $10,000 for dresses charged to entertainment. Dresses are an entertainment. The way I wear them, they are. <laughs> Gertie, you're going to jail. Oh, Sam. Sam, you can't let him take me to jail. Oh, think of it. Me, all alone in jail. No one to love me. No one to hug me. No one to kiss me. Oh, think of it. Beautiful me, all alone in jail. Sam, come back here. Where are you going? I'm going to get my hat and go with you. Get him out of here. <laughs> now, before Abbott and Costello have their final fling, we bring you one more thought on this subject. <laughs> Come back here, Costello. We're not finished yet. Yeah, but I'm in a hurry. I got to get home and finish my new song. You're writing another song? Yes, and it's a dandy. It's so sentimental. It's about Mother. A mother song, eh? What's the name of it? It's entitled, Mother, when I saw you sitting on the whistle of that train, I knew you were out on a toot. <laughs> <laughs> you dummy, you better leave writing to the boys who write our show. Folks, our writing staff is headed by Eddie Foreman with Paul Conlon, Pat Costello, Martin Ragaway, and Len Stern. Yes, and to our producer, Charles Vander. We'll be back with you next Tuesday night. Thursday night! Good night, folks. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody in Patterson. Good night. Listen every Thursday night at this time for another great Adam and Costello show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood. Be sure to stay tuned for the outstanding entertainment which follows throughout the evening on this ABC station. <laughs>